Every day, people are sat bored in organic chemistry classes, learning reaction after reaction. But little do they know how these reactions are used in the real world to create molecules which can change lives and make millions in the process. In this ongoing series, we dissect the list of top-selling pharmaceuticals, discussing how they treat different diseases and what reactions actually go into synthesizing these molecules. Sunitinib was the 184th highest selling pharmaceutical by revenue, generating $347 million in 2022 alone. It is used for the treatment of renal cell carcinoma, which is the most common form of kidney cancer. It is also used to treat gastrointestinal stromal tumours and was the first drug to be approved for two different cancer indications at the same time by the FDA. Sinitinib works by acting as a dual inhibitor of vascular endothelial growth factor receptors and platelet-derived growth factor receptors, which are important in the growth and survival of cancer cells. They are both receptor tyrosine kinases, which when activated by a signaling molecule, catalyze the phosphorylation of tyrosine residues, which causes downstream effects in the cell. Sunitinib inhibits these tyrosine kinases, stopping signal transduction to the cell. The drug was developed by Sujan and is now marketed by Pfizer, who acquired Sujan in 2003. The synthesis starts by reacting this starter material with sodium nitrite to form an oxime group, which can be reduced to the amine using zinc metal. This alpha amino ketone needs to be generated and used fresh in solution due to its ability to self-condense with itself. Once prepared, it is reacted with ethyl acetoacetate to form a pyrrole ring. This sequence of reactions is called the nor pyrrole synthesis and the mechanism is as follows. The amine undergoes a condensation reaction with the ketone carbonyl to form an imine, which can tautomerize to an enamine. The enamine can then attack the second ketone carbonyl, which after elimination of water and tautomerization gives the pyrrole product. This material is then treated with hydrochloric acid, which selectively decarboxylates the terbutyl ester. An aldehyde group can be inserted into this position through a wilsmeyer hack reaction, which starts by reacting DMF with Pockel-3 to form the Wilsmeyer reagent. The pyrrole ring acts as a nucleophile and attacks the electrophilic iminium ion. The pyrrole ring re-aromatizes and then the lone pair on the nitrogen can kick out the chloride leaving group, which reforms the aminium cation. Upon workup, this aminium species hydrolyzes back to the aldehyde, giving the product of this reaction. Hydrolysis of the ethyl ester and amide bond formation using DCC and HOBT complete the synthesis of this fragment. The second fragment is made by reacting this starter material with hydrazine in a wolf kishner reduction which selectively reduces the more electrophilic ketone carbonyl. The two fragments are then joined together by Novonagel condensation, which is catalyzed by pyrrolidine. Pyrrolidine catalyzes this reaction by reacting with the aldehyde group to form an iminium ion, which is more reactive towards nucleophilic attack by the enol form of the second fragment. The pyrrolidine is then regenerated for an E1CB type elimination, which forms the final product. Idaravone is used for the treatment of motor neuron disease and is strange in a few ways. First, its structure is smaller and simpler than most pharmaceutical compounds, being one of the smallest pharmaceuticals on the market. Its unique structure may be the cause of its second strange feature, which is that its mechanism of action and pharmacology are actually unknown. It is thought that its effects come from the molecule's ability to act as an antioxidant in the body by reacting with radical species. This is because it has been hypothesized that high oxidative stress can lead to the damage of neurons in people with motor neuron disease. Due to its simple chemical structure, its synthesis is only one step long and involves the condensation of phenylhydrazine with ethyl acetoacetate to give the final product. Siponimod is a treatment for the autoimmune disease multiple sclerosis and is a functional antagonist of the sphingosine 1 phosphate receptor. This is a G-coupled protein receptor, which is a class of receptors commonly targeted with pharmaceuticals. 
It was developed by Novartis and was approved for use by the FDA in March 2019. The synthesis of saponamod is broken up into two fragments. Synthesis of the first fragment begins with a benzylic bromination of this starting material using MBS and AIBN as a radical initiator. The benzyl bromide is then converted to the benzyl alcohol through reaction with cesium carbonate in water. A Suzuki reaction is used to install a vinyl group to the phenyl core, which upon reduction with hydrogen and a palladium over charcoal catalyst, attaches an ethyl group to the molecule. For the second fragment, another Suzuki reaction is used to install a cyclohexene group, which can also be reduced using the same conditions as before to give a cyclohexyl ring. A reduction of the carboxylic acid is achieved using borane, with the resulting alcohol being converted to the bromide for a reaction with HBr and acetic anhydride. The final step in the synthesis of this fragment is the substitution of the benzyl bromide with its oxime reagent. To join the two fragments together, the oxime is first hydrolyzed with HCl to reveal the alkylated hydroxylamine. This group undergoes a condensation reaction with the aldehyde of the second fragment, reforming an oxime bond. The hypervalent iodine reagent IBX is used to oxidize the benzyl alcohol to the aldehyde, which is used for the last step in this synthesis, a reductive amination using sodium borohydride as a reducing agent. The last molecule in this episode is acetamide, which is a medication used to treat high blood cholesterol levels. It works in a different way to the more typical statin-like drugs by inhibiting the absorption of cholesterol from the small intestine. This leads to lower cholesterol levels in the liver cells, which forces them to absorb more cholesterol from circulating blood, lowering the levels. It does this through inhibiting the neiman pick c C1-like-1 protein, which regulates the absorption of cholesterol from the small intestine. The synthesis of azetamibe involves some of the most complex chemistry we have seen in this series so far. This carboxylic acid is reacted with pyroloyl chloride to form a mixed anhydride species, activating it for attack by this oxazolidinone. Using titanium as a Lewis acid, the enolate form of this molecule can be formed under relatively mild conditions, using dipia as a base. The enolate then undergoes an evans aldol type reaction with the following imine, where the stereochemistry is controlled by the chiral oxazolidinone. This reaction goes through the unexpected and less common non-Evans anti aldol transition state, leading to the following stereochemistry of the product. Bis-trimethyl silyl acetamide and a catalytic amount of TBAF is used as a base to allow cyclization to the four-membered ring. Hydrolysis of the methoxyester leads to the carboxylic acid, which was converted to the acid chloride using oxyl chloride and a catalytic amount of DMF. This reaction typically allows for milder conditions than using phenyl chloride. The DMF is actually used to generate the same species we saw earlier in this video, the Vilsmar reagent, which converts the carboxylic acid to the acid chloride. This acid chloride is reacted in a Nagishi coupling forming the substituted ketone, which can be stereoselectively reduced using a CBS reduction. In this reaction, the chiral oxazoborolidine controls which face of the ketone the hydride is delivered to. The final step in the synthesis is the removal of the benzyl protecting group using hydrogen and a palladium over charcoal catalyst, revealing the free phenol. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more like it, check out the playlist in the description or at the end of the video. If you would like to help support the channel, be sure to give this video a like as it's the easiest way you can help. As always, references to papers used will be in the description, and if you have any questions, leave them below in the comments.